It's well known that Nelson Mandela had an appetite for a good curry and that he enjoyed food with a spicy tang. He was also not set in his ways and savoured everything from Greek lamb to local cook sisters. But most of all, he enjoyed the fellowship that came with the meal. When Chef Vani planned a Madiba inspired menu for this centenary year, she was inspired not only by his favourite dishes, but also by his personality. And here's the result. If you've read some of Nelson Mandela's letters from prison, you'll know he used food and food metaphors to talk about love, passion and missing people. His love of food is so well known and today we'll be celebrating his life with a wonderful meal by Chef Vani Pariachi. Vani, it is so good to finally meet you in person. Hi Jack, welcome. Look at all these fragrant, fresh ingredients. What are we cooking up today? So in order for Madiba's centenary year, I've decided to do a few dishes of his favorite meal. So we're gonna start off first with the butter chicken samosas. Where do we start? I have some marinated chicken. I'm gonna start off first by making the filling. The chicken that I've used is deboned chicken thighs. So you wanna cut them up quite smallish. So I'm gonna ask you if you'd like to carry on with that and then I'm going to make- Definitely chopping <laughs> like you do. All I'm gonna do is add a little bit of ginger garlic puree and then the sauce. We don't want too much of the sauce. Give that a good stir and just bring it up to a quick bubble. I'm going to do a little bit of salt, just to taste, and then some cream. The cream adds the nice, beautiful butteriness to this dish. And that's perfect, so you can add that in. Is this how one does it? Yes. <laughs> like the chef I am. Can I have a few sprigs of coriander, please? And then you can quickly just give it a few rough chops. You're the perfect assistant. Next is we're going to make our dough. So all I need is a little bit of flour and I'm just using good old fashioned cake flour. I'm not going to add all of this because we need some to actually roll our dough. And then the next ingredient is celery seeds. It's got that beautiful earthy woody taste. This is amazing. And that's just going to make our samosa even more yummier. And in goes a little bit of salt, just for flavor. In goes some water. I'm gonna add the water little by little because I want it to be a soft, workable dough. As you can see, it's almost there. It just needs a few more drops. And there we go. Let's pop that onto the table. Just give it a good knead. You know, we just want it all to be together again. And now our dough is just perfect. So I'm just gonna roll out. And that's about it. Our dough. I'm just going to cut that into portions. So you take your little dough, just press it in your palm, dunk that into a little bit of flour, and then I'm just going to start rolling that just to a nice oval shape. And that's basically the shape we want. Okay. So let's try. So just pat it first on your palm, and then into the flour, and then you can start rolling. There we go. You can roll the rest while I get our filling ready for us. It should be cooled enough. So all we do is I'm just going to sort of measure a half of it and cut it straight down. So you're going to hold the two halves mm -hmm. and just flip it over onto each other. Make sure you seal properly. Mm -hmm. And then just a little bit of your filling with some sauce. And then I've got some water. So just dab your finger in and bring them together. Oh, look at that. Okay, let me try. Okay, so we're going to seal this. Okay. Not a lot of water. Okay. And then just seal the corners together. Hmm. Okay, you are a skinny samosa. Perfect. I fry it at 180 degrees just until it's golden brown because, you know, our filling is cooked already. So all we're doing is really cooking and crisping out that dough. Oh, that is going to be so delicious. See? Wee, wow. And you do want that bubbly look as okay. well. Medieval actually learned to eat these samosas in Robben Island. They were snuck in and he loved them. It was a, a treat. <gasps> they are perfect and they are ready. So all I'm going to do is just put them on some paper towel and then we're ready to serve up our samosas. Look at our masterpieces. They are gorgeous and I have the platter ready. We can just put them a bit randomly and could you hand me some coriander? 
And there we have it, our butter chicken samosa. Let me put that on the table and bring out the next ingredients. So our next dish we're going to make is Danya Murg and Madiba loved chicken curry. So this is my take on a chicken curry, which I know he would love. Fabulous. A little bit of ghee. Yay. That's melting and some ginger and garlic. And I'm going to top in the chicken. And you want that to cook really well. I'm going to add the spices and I'm going to add a little bit of turmeric, some coriander powder. <laughs> I'm going to season and then I have some coriander sauce. You want it to be saucy and a nice curry. This is that while this is just finishing cooking. Can you get me a good bunch of coriander? So I'm finish this off with some hung yogurt. Perfect. And our dish, Zach, is actually done. Done. Yay. Done. We're going to plate that. Beautiful chicken curry. And it is beautiful. And a good pile of that coriander, please. Now let's set that aside and we'll put up the next dish. Vani, have you ever had the privilege of meeting Madiba? Yes. In 94, fresh out of hotel school, my first job ever, I met Madiba and I'm like, oh, oh, unbelievable, that feeling, I'll never forget it. He came around, all the chefs stood out and shook his hand. I'm like, ah, oh, just shaking the deepest hand. <laughs> that was huge in my life, absolutely huge. But now let's cook his other favorite dish, which is Sasson Kassag. I use a little bit of mustard, some red mustard and some mizuno because it's got that beautiful bite to it. And then some baby English spinach. And all I did was blanch and shock that and we turned that into a puree. To start off, we've got a hot pan and we've got ghee. A little bit of our ginger garlic paste and the spice I'm using is some coriander seeds and some cumin. Just a little pops and a few dried chilies and then we're going to add all our onions. A good hand pinch of julienne ginger and we're just going to saute this off just so the onions are nice and soft. Beth, can you pass me three green chilies please? All I'm going to do is just break it or you can split it lengthwise in half. I'm going to add a little bit of the cashmere spice or chili powder and a little bit of salt so that cooks out and our spinach. I just want that to produce a little bit so the water evaporates and it's about time to add in the polenta. Oh, just a sprinkle of polenta. Just a sprinkle. Oh. This is cooked down beautifully. And all we're going to do is plate up. And I'm not going to garnish this with coriander or anything. All I'm going to do is add a good dollop of our ghee on top. And this is traditionally served with messy roti, which is made with polenta and utter flour as well. So will you take this to the table and I'll bring out the next dish. Yes, boss. The day had begun with clouds over much of the valley, but then an auspicious omen appeared. The sun has decided to grace us <laughs> to, with his presence. Grace us with his presence. <laughs> so the next dish we're doing is a mixed vegetable biryani, which is also one of Madiba's favorites. He loved biryani. So let's start with the marination process. So in goes the peas, some paneer, carrots, and I like using rainbow carrots because that adds beautiful color to that. Some green beans, a bit of yogurt, and cinnamon sticks green cardamom, some black peppercorns, some cloves, and I'm just going to give that a quick mix. And the rest of our spices we are going to add when we are braising this. Well, I'm just going to set that aside. So some ghee, a little bit of ginger garlic, and I'm going to add some cumin seeds, some coriander seeds. Just let that melt a bit. Some cashmere spice, a little bit of turmeric, a little bit of chili powder, and a few bay leaves. And next is we're gonna add in our vegetables. That looks so good already. And we just want it to coat because our biryani is going to be finished off very quickly. <laughs> and a little bit of salt. 
sack. What I'm going to ask you to do is grab me a bunch of mint and coriander. And you're just going to give that a few chops. And to that, I'm going to add some chopped masala. Smell that already. Perfect. So now we're ready to lay our biryani. So I've pre-cooked the rice and I've also got some fried onions. So I'm going to put some mixed vegetables at the base and layer it with some of the rice. Your perfectly cut <laughs> coriander and mint. Some onions. And then I start the process again. And another layer. Some more rice. Some onions. And get covered. Last layer. So I'm going to pop this in the oven for 10 minutes and I'll see you at the table. My mouth is already watering. So this is my version of Madiba Centenary Feast. And perfectly fit for him. I've also done an addition of butternut and mustard seed curry, prawns cooked in kasturi murti and misi roti. I am going to steal one of these. I've been dying to have one since we made them. <laughs> I love your work. <laughs> Pleasure. Barney had succeeded in capturing so much of the man himself, sometimes fiery, sometimes gentle, forthright, yet subtle, never ever bland and always authentic.